Welcome, welcome grandparents and those that are 55 plus years young. This is Trees Every Day, number 11 for March the 4th, 2021. And I'm going to, over the next weeks, is actually shoot some videos that would contain tips and tools and techniques that you can use as a grandparent introducing your grandchildren to the natural world. And today is a start of that uh, progression of videos for you. Now, before we jump into them, there is something I want to um, get off my chest, so to speak. You don't have to be a nature-based educator in that you have spent years and years in the out of doors with nature because of your involvement, but yet you find yourself at a position uh, later in life without that kind of experience, yet you can still introduce your grandchildren to the outer doors, to the natural world. And that's why these tips and tools and techniques are available for you and with you. Now, the great thing is, is you can take one of these videos out with you on your phone and you can play it as a reminder, but also you have an opportunity to just check in every once in a while and see if the idea that's being suggested on these videos could be put into place on your next visit into the local park, the, uh, the wooded area that is in your city or close to your city to uh, visiting eco retreats um, in different parts of the world, even something that might be close to where you live now. So again, these tips, tools, and techniques are to get you started, and they are presented in lists of 10. And it's not that um, these lists are in priority, that you go from list one to list two to list three, nor are the items, uh, the action outcomes on each list is that you have to go one, two, three. There is a bit of a free range uh, atmosphere to these lists for you. And sometimes I have seen people take some of my ideas and they go to list number one and they go grab number six and then they go to list number two and they grab number two and four and they go to the next list, grab some, they go to the next list and make up a whole new list for what they want to do over the course of the month. And then they go and they shift and shuffle, mix and match to create another list for another month. And that's something else to keep in mind as you access these lists. So being that this is Trees Every Day number 11, this is one of many, but I think in this case, it'll be one of 10. I'm gonna create 10 of these before I create a new Trees Every Day series. So with that, let's jump on in and see what's gonna unfold for us. The first list that we're going to look at, number one of many, and as I mentioned, it'll be one of 10 in this series. It's called Grandparents Unveiling the Extraordinary History and Mystery of Nature. And it's really about 10 good, solid tips for you to take into consideration when you're thinking of involving your grandchildren in the out of doors. Now, this notion of extraordinary history and mystery is it's a reminder that of the activity, this action outcome that's going to be suggested, is that you think about what has maybe happened in the past that you bring to the present and what might be happening in the future that you can bring to the present. Therefore, you're tapping into the history and tapping into the mystery. And the statement is one that gives you an opportunity to sort of balance up those two aspects of your involvement in nature in the natural world because it's really important to be present and to be aware of what's happening while you're in the natural world not only from a safety perspective but also just being able to take in to pay attention to what is unfolding for you in the outer doors the handout that you see on the left-hand side of the screen, that PDF, uh, a link will be provided to it so that if you ever wanted to download it, it would be there for you as well. 
But I've created two slides here, which I'm going to look at the first five on the slide, and then I'll look at the last five on another slide. So let's buckle in and uh, let's take a ride with these uh, statements. So this is the Grandparent as Nature Educator series. And the first one that you want to take into consideration is all weather is good. And what I'm attempting to do there is get you to celebrate each weather pattern without suggesting one pattern is better than another. I have sometimes I'm interacting with grandparents and they'll say something like, well, when it's a rainy day, uh, we're not really gonna go out. We'll just do something inside. Uh, it's a snowy day, it's a little cooler, colder, and I don't think we're gonna go out. Now, I understand from a safety perspective, I, I get that. And yet I would like to make the following comment. It's also important to have the grandchildren experience playing in the rain, as it is to be playing when it's cooler, a little colder in the snow, for example. Because when you get a chance to actually physically experience those environments, do you raise awareness of what it is to live in those environments? One of the great aspects of my life is that I've had the pleasure of playing, working in extremes of temperature and weather. And I have been in the deserts where it has been very, very hot. Two, I have spent time in the out of doors in winter situations where all I had was my sleeping bag in a survival night and the extreme temperatures that go with them. I would say is that this temperature between zero and 10 degrees Celsius for those of you who are working with Fahrenheit, I believe you can do a, a quick little shift and shuffle there and figure it out. But this is a temperature, especially if you've got some of the youngsters along with you, is to pay attention. Are they getting cold? Because cold will uh, seep in, creep in, and you want to pay attention to it so that at the end of the day, uh, you're not having to deal with something like hypothermia. So I just make that as a cautionary note here. Number two, eat outdoors with trees. <laughs> yeah, it's find a place uh, under a tree or with trees to enjoy a meal, whether a snack or a picnic, even with the insects. I, I remember years ago, uh, having a picnic, and unfortunately, we sat a little too close to an anthill, and uh, we did get swarmed uh, by the ants, and that was a great reminder to pay attention to what nature is presenting to us as the sitting area, is make sure you're not sitting on someone else's home. <laughs> so again, we learned, but this notion of being able to uh, sit under the tree, with the trees, to have your snack, because maybe you're walking from area to area, or you're spending some time with a, a picnic and being with the trees, then the trees are offering their shade and, and the coolness. But also, it's really beautiful to watch the different patterns of as the sun moves, where might the shade be moving across your picnic area? And it's fun to be able to then chat about what's happening and, and the movement of the sun in that case. Number three, the freedom to roam. What I'm getting at here is move through nature with the freedom to roam, balanced by a destination to arrive. Often where I see grandparents walking with their grandchildren, it seems to be they're staying on the path, they're walking, and they're not going to deviate from that, and they're just going to go from A to B. And it's sort of like a, a march that they're doing. Whereas I appreciate that in some parks, uh, they ask you not to go off uh, the pathways. I, I understand that. But if you have a chance to be with the forest in a more natural uh, setting away from um, the way in which we construct paths, to have that ability to roam around and just walk around trees and see trees from different angles and to be able to sit and, and look at that tree from different angles. 
it, it's really important. And sometimes it's not about moving from A to C. You may actually get A to B, spend a lot of time in C, and then do a quick jump from B to C. Uh, I'm just using the ABC story there. It's, it's a time to roam and uh, get some sense of what's going on. Uh, because sometimes you might pass that very subtle uh, flower that's there or that footprint that you could then speak to or uh, have some questions asked about it. But also with this one is do remember the gentle footprints. This is not about crashing through the bush. This is not about breaking off branches. This is about leaving gentle footprints so that others can enjoy where you have been. Again, I'm balancing it off against uh, the pathways that are constructed for us and um, walking those versus roaming around and having an opportunity to explore uh, the natural environment as it is. The next one is about growing and planting. Now you can grow a garden and then eat what you grow, and you can plant a tree and eat the fruits and nuts from the tree you nurture. There's an opportunity for both of those. Now, something as simple as a herb garden, it's about getting the soil, potting it, putting in the seeds, nurturing them and seeing what happens. It's about getting a, a small tree and growing it over time so that uh, the kids can see how it grows and um, because of watering and moving with light and how it moves in response to the light. There's lots of ways in which to bring the nature stories in your house and then take the herb garden and put it out in a garden or put it outside. Take the tree that you've been nurturing and plant it in your yard or find somewhere where you know that it will survive if you, if you take it out and plant it. Within cities, I would advise that you contact your uh, local parks department uh, just to check it's okay to plant the kind of tree that you might have and where you're thinking of planting it. Uh, sometimes uh, we might plant a tree that is not good for the area unless we check. We, we need to check to make sure that it's okay. So uh, a piece of uh, wisdom there for you. Another one is um, all nature experiences. Now, what I'm getting at here is that visit nature close by. That could be your backyard. It could be along uh, the sidewalk that's in front of your house, uh, down the street that you're living on. But it's also about maybe going on a road trip and seeing something a little bit different. Uh, even in the city where I am, um, a road trip inside the city can bring different kinds of nature experiences to the grandchildren uh, from creeks and rivers to forested areas and meadows. Even in the city, there are um, a mix. But there's also how you might be able to go for extended visits. Um, I call them extended sleeps, uh, where you have to support the arrival and the during and departure conversations from those places where you spend a longer time. Yet at the same time, you can use these, this idea of pre, during, post, even walking into your backyard. And what I'm thinking is, if you're walking into your backyard and it's spring, what might unfold? Walking in the summer, what might unfold? Walking in the fall, what might unfold? Walking in the winter, what might unfold? Because as you interact and you have the seasonal look, you also get a little bit of a different perspective of what nature is bringing to you. Um, I remember this past winter, it was a little bit lighter on the snow. So we haven't had great banks of snow around. So it would have been a very different experience this winter than if you would have looked at it from past winters. And here's a really good reminder of all the things that are here what might be brought from the history of nature to the present? And what might you say might happen on the future and bring it to the present? Uh, are you aware of maybe 
uh, a new woodlot going up somewhere? Or is there a part of a woodlot that's going to be cut down uh, for building expansion? And what might that mean from a nature perspective for you and the grandchildren? And also, you can take these same kind of ideas and stretch them out, even from an imaginary point of view, around the world. And we will be providing resources on uh, different trees around the world as we pull in stories and uh, educators giving us uh, new insights into the kind of trees that are in their area. So keep a lookout for those as well. The next one that I want to take a look at is outside with smiles <laughs> and the joy of going out. So is to play outside. That is to play as you experience all that presents, everything that unfolds for you while keeping it safer for everyone. And again, that can go back to the weather patterns as it can be about poking around in wood piles, uh, poking around in rock gardens and seeing what lives there. Again, always um, be alert where you are and what uh, insects and what uh, animals and birds might be in your area and that you're not gonna disturb something that might cause problems. And also to be alert of, okay, there are people who think they're afraid of spiders or other kinds of insects, but it seems to have been more of a learnt behavior is just be ready if someone takes a, an adverse reaction to uh, your introduction to an insect or an animal and uh, be alert that you don't um, over inflate that reaction. Another one is to uh, take into consideration the animals and plants that are present. Uh, so observe all that arrives. In other words, uh, for the, the animals, the birds that are coming in, what comes in at what time? Uh, a robin often shows up as one of the first birds or the geese flying over in formation coming back from their uh, winter habitats. And also uh, you start to notice the insects picking up. There's a, a little bit more flying insects or what plants arrive and we have the dandelion that comes in. And uh, people sometimes give the dandelion a bit of a bad rap and thinking it's um, a weed and we must get rid of it. When in fact, if you understand the dandelion is actually um, a food source, you can make a dandelion salads. But again, be careful there if people have been using uh, herbicides to, uh, to get rid of the dandelions, you don't wanna be eating that. But in their natural format, in their natural form, explore books about eating um, plants from nature and uh, look at those, read through them before you actually munch down on a dandelion salad, okay. So another one would be is to appreciate the experiences that these animals and plants bring to you. Um, I actually find the yellow dandelion in terms of a carpeting uh, to be very beautiful. Uh, I know others, um, they're out there wanting to get rid of them. But also from an animal's point of view, understand their journey, where might they have come from? I mentioned the geese flying back, um, the squirrels, where did the squirrels come from? Do you know where their winter habitat, their history to where you are now and what might that habitat be like in the future for them? So again, ways to take a look at the animals and plants. The next one I'd like you to think about is walk with and walk because. So, what you wanna do is walk with the plants and animals, the, the natural world. And you wanna work and you wanna walk because of the natural world. So the walk with is maybe there's a time to go by the river to see how it's flowing faster in the spring, but also to walk with the river in uh, the fall when it's a lot less and seeing what the banks are like and seeing what the river uh, course is like. And to walk because, as I mentioned, is rivers often will cut out banks and it will present a different kind of uh, river 
uh, feature that wasn't there the summer before. And to be able to talk about that, I know that from my rafting days, is that every spring to summer, we always had to do a trip down the river to find out how it might have been um, edited, uh, shifted, rounded out, extended, more rapids brought into it so that we knew what we were getting into when we started taking people down the river. So again, walk with, walk because. And this all adds value when you do that because um, seeing the differences, seeing the similarities is an important way of looking at your natural environment involvement. The next one to look at is ecology awareness. In other words, complete a landscape study. See what was before, what is now, and what can unfold. So if you're in a wooded area, just take a look at the trees and are they falling down? Are they all falling down in a similar direction, which might suggest a windstorm uh, sometime before. Take a look at trees that have fallen down and maybe over the course of a number of years to see how it de decomposes. Um, take a look at uh, the, uh, the landscape from, well, it's wet and maybe the next year it's not so wet. What happened there? Again, the landscape will give you stories that you can work with to come to understand the natural environment. And it also gives you the sense of the history of what might have happened. Uh, sometimes you might find uh, in areas you've come across is that maybe fire has gone through 20 some years ago and there's still some evidence there, or maybe some insects have come through and you can see the, the evidence there. Um, you can see where maybe the deer have browsed on the uh, dogwoods over the past winter and how the dogwoods look now, having had the uh, top uh, part of the branches uh, chewed off. What might it look like as it unfolds and comes to life in its summer um, presence? But also it's about really understanding where things are going to come from, from the future what might uh, take place in your area. Um, I know that uh, there's often different kinds of weather patterns that are coming in and how might that affect the ecology of your area. In the city where I am, we've had some very extreme hot summers and it's made a difference to the landscape in terms of drying up the grass a lot more versus uh, the next summer, there might be more rain that stays more green. And again, the coloring of the hills in the city, it, it's quite amazing when you start to really pay attention to the subtleties that are, are around you. And the last one I wanted to mention is geographic presence, where geography refers to the study of time and place, um, also about humans in place, uh, the places themselves, and what happens over time. And I came to appreciate this one just simply because of seeing how people are interacting with the mountains, how they're interacting with the prairies, how they're interacting with deserts and sort of seeing how our presence is influencing the, um, the natural world and over time. And this is where I, I ask you to sort of share reverence, uh, to appreciate um, this geography of your visit, your walk, your quietness, and to be able to look at it from the, this history aspect of where you are presently and what might be the future. And maybe what you can do is um, think about what might happen and uh, uh, sort of share, oh, maybe this is what's going to happen. You create a story and then come back the next year later, or come back a week later and sort of get a sense of maybe see where the differences might have been. But it's to, to share that reverence, that appreciation, that, that celebration with the geography that you find yourselves in. That is so important. So with all of these ideas, I would certainly encourage you to subscribe and ring the bell, comment, like, and share so we can learn together. And so I can bring um, more ideas like this and 
know that this is one of many. There will be nine in this uh, educator series for grandparents that you can uh, pull ideas from using that mix and match suggestion that I made earlier in the video. But these 10 action outcome statements, if you take them and write each one of them down on a piece of paper, and then think of all the different ways in which you could bring that action outcome statement, that, that action verb and the outcome that's associated and bring it to life for yourself, bring it to life for the grandkids, uh, to just bring it to life for all your friends, I think that you will find a really beautiful interaction will unfold with the natural environment. The, this notion of being able to create extraordinary experiences for yourself, to unveil um, aspects of your experience, these extraordinary experiences that you may not have seen or, or walk right by. These 10 action outcome statements are a great start for you in interacting with the natural environment with your grandchildren. And I encourage you to bring each one of them to life. And please comment, share questions uh, in the area below or somewhere around the video, uh, you will find linkage to places to share comments or to ask questions uh, so we can learn together. So with that, I, I, I wish you the best in how you interact and why you interact with the the natural world as you unveil the history and mystery of nature with your grandchildren and for yourself. Take care.